everyone, and welcome to the 6.5 Summit AI Unleashed. I'm Will Townsend. I manage the networking, telecommunications, and cybersecurity practices for more insights and strategy. And today I'm joined by Marvell's VP of Technology, Mark Kumberlay, and VP of Product Marketing, Rishi Cho, for this cloud infrastructure spotlight on expanding the boundaries of custom silicon. And with that context set, gentlemen, let's jump in. And uh, Mark, let's start with you. Sure. And I've got a guess to this question, but but I want to hear your perspective. You know, for decades, Merchant Silicon has really dominated, you know, the data center. And from your perspective, what's giving rise to custom and how is this different than the old ASIC business model? Yeah, I think it's really a couple of a couple of factors, right? First of all, uh, what we've seen over the last several years has been a pretty pronounced slowing of Moore's law. Um, so unfortunately, every technology generation, we don't get the doubling that we used to get. Unfortunately, uh, the data center doesn't care that more law, Moore's law is slowing. Uh, mm -hmm. They need to find a way to uh, increase performance every generation. And what that means is that uh, there's a big change in emergence in things like chiplets to enable these customers to take advantage of these bigger, more complicated systems. And so, I mean, I would assume AI workloads are, are driving the need for that as well, right, Mark? Absolutely. And, you know, the data center have really specific workloads that are really dedicated to specific functions and they're different for each data center. AI mm -hmm. is a big part of that. Sure. And Rishi, any, anything to add to that? Yeah, exactly. Adding to that stuff, right? Uh, today's uh, infrastructure deployment and the data center are more focused to a specific workload. And, uh, and the service providers are basically constructing these data centers with that OPEX in mind. They want to basically optimize their op OPEX and give the maximum returns to their customers in terms of quality of service. And this basically fuels that custom silicon comes into play rather than the standard product coming into play. And coming with the AI front as well, AI is very power hungry, we know that. So there is a heavy load of customization and a unique way of doing the things so that you optimize the power to get maximum returns on this investments and also your OPEX to make you really profitable. In fact, what we see that 25% of the compute silicon moving forward will be more towards the custom side of stuff. Sure. And the project what we are seeing on the custom XPOs are kind of in that direction of custom. And this basically trend has really become a norm in the industry, especially for the hyperscalers who are building their own data centers. It really is. I mean, and, and the hyperscalers are doing their own silicon designs as well, right? So. Purpose-built silicon is really sort of driving the train. And, and Rishi, Mark, you know, mentioned chiplets. So I'd love for you to solve a debate. So um, are chiplets considered custom? So there are two aspects of chiplet. I'll let Mark speak about it, but just at the high end, the whole idea of chiplet was done for two different reasons. One reason was to accelerate the execution time. If there is a repeatable function within the organization or within the vendor, who wants to put the footprint in all of the silicons. So it will be more of a cut, paste, and copy to reduce that OPEX to doing it and enforcing the trademark on their silicon. That's number one. The second one uniqueness is also with these designs getting more complicated and the limitations of the die size or the radical size of the die coming into play, uh, chiplets becomes a more viable option where you can basically implant in it and also, if there are forward-looking changes, it can be done very quickly without changing the parent mothership die. Okay, and Mark, anything to add there? Yeah, and, and I want to kind of um, circle back to what I was uh, speaking about um, for the first question, which was really about, again, Moore's Law slowing down. We right. started to see Moore's Law slowing down in about seven nanometers, uh, moving, transitioning into the future technology nodes. And once we saw slowing down, as I mentioned, we couldn't sacrifice performance. So the amount of silicon that we needed to put into a package is it has been increasing and increasing every technology generation since then. Mm -hmm. um, now, by the time we're in, you know, two nanometers with designs today, uh, we're looking at, you know, over a thousand square millimeters, 2000 square millimeters of silicon that really needs to be integrated together on a package. And the only way to do it is to break it into pieces using technologies like chiplet. Um, mm -hmm. So in a way, chiplets uh, don't have to be custom, but a lot of these big designs, the only way to achieve that performance is to use multiple chips working together. Yeah, no, that, make, that makes for perfect sense. So let's shift the conversation to memory. And, you know, I, I spent a lot of time with the Marvell team and, and I know this is a big focus for, for Marvell and 
historically memory has been you know based on standards for obvious reasons for for scale you know supply chain and costs and that sort of thing but I'm beginning to see the rise of custom memory, you know, like custom, you know, high bandwidth memory and that sort of thing. And and so, Mark, from your perspective, why are we seeing this? Is the answer AI again, or is there more to it than that? Well, AI is certainly the major driver to this. But but again, it kind of goes to play with the the incredible need to get more and more performance. What happens with customizing HBM, especially with Marvell's custom HBM solutions, is that we can pull a lot of the content that was just interfacing to those memories off of the main die, off of the main die for an accelerator. And that yeah. opens up a lot more area for, for our customers to really get the performance, you know, the, the number of teraflops that they need in mm -hmm. the design. So that makes that makes a big difference. Like, for example, we can clear up like 25 percent of the die space that would have otherwise been dedicated to talking just to HBM memories themselves. And we still get even better performance of the custom HBM with about 70 percent less power spent mm -hmm. on the interface to those memories themselves. And, and uh, I'm sure, as, as you're aware, right, power has become really, really critical for a lot of oh, these applications. And Mark, you sort of touched on this when you were talking about Moore's Law and, you know, hitting the wall there. I mean, custom's been long associated with XPUs and CPUs, right? And, I mean, you look what, you know, others are doing with, you know, GPU technology, AMDs and the NVIDIAs of the world and, and adjacent technologies like, you know, and packages like memory. But it is it expanding even beyond that base as well? So we, we spoke about how customizing HBM is really, really important when we're integrating high capacity memory on the package. Um, one thing that's equally important is actually uh, the SRAM, the embedded SRAM that's uh, actually built within the accelerator or switch or, or whatever uh, kind of customized data center device you're building. Um, we actually uh, are building um, very specific, highly customized memory solutions uh, for, our, for our customers um, that are really up cranking out as much bandwidth as we can per square millimeter of space. And in fact, our memory solutions are providing about 17 times the bandwidth that you can get from an off-the-shelf memory today. Uh, so it's a it's a really big deal for us. It's a really big deal for our customers, and it's kind of existential to continuing to grow performance in AI. Beyond that, um, not only is that high bandwidth memory, the the embedded SRAM memory, incredibly important for these devices, but also high capacity uh, memory is a huge need in the data center as well. And we address that actually with a a set of uh, product families that are optimized to. Uh, allow CXL connectivity for um, memory acceleration and for memory pooling or capacity, enabling like 12 terabytes of memory accessible through this one uh, highly op uh, highly uh, size optimized uh, chip. So it's it's a pretty it's a pretty special offering, kind of stacking all the different types of memory that that are needed for the data center. So not only you know do we customize accelerators, NICs, components like that. But we're even seeing customization um, moving into the switch arena. And uh, that's actually what Rishi is an expert on. So uh, yeah. I'd really like to get his perspective on that. Yeah, Rishi would love to hear that. Yeah, so on the on the switching side, right, it's basically what it's switching all about. It's basically routing large number of packets into different segments. So there mm -hmm. is a lookup table associated with the switch. And there is also a huge centralized buffer scheme inside the switching. And as we increase the radix side, radix of the switch, that means more fan outs of the switch. That means indirectly we are telling that there are more individual ports which are talking to the switch, more unique MAC, MAC addresses. And plus, there is also a cocktail of things going on between the layer two and layer three in terms of routing interfaces. And this mm -hmm. all has to be all encapsulated into a large buffer size and managed accurately to do the right pipelining for the switching uh, uh, to happen with a very low latency. So memory inside the device or SRAM in the device and the overall, I would say, the management of those uh, memory modules become very important for us in terms of fan out, in terms of also data manipulation, which is happening inside, and also at what mm -hmm. rate, the uh, bandwidth rate are we operating at. So overall, this whole infrastructure and the SRAM implementation on the switching side and custom switch side becomes very, very critical. In fact, I'm going to speak more about it when we talk about the different criteria of switching. Within the switch and this memory, you have different bifurcations happening because of AI, which is scale up and scale out. 
and mm -hmm. also within this bifurcation of especially on scale up there is much more requirement for memory because scale up is something where yearly you want to utilize all of your gpu optimization the highest opex what you're spending is on the gpus and the last thing you want is to be underutilized and the underutilization of these gpus are coming because of the memory so some gpus will be starving for memory some gpus will be kind of underutilized for their memory a usage what they have and the switch fabric is the one which kind of encapsulates all of them gets in into a unified structure and scale up and provides a unique value proposition in terms of custom where you can make sure that your investments on your infrastructure especially on the gpu side is kind of amortized across all the nodes yeah and you can actually you know fine tune the performance as well right with absolutely and you know the another trend that i'm seeing is the integration of dpus and into topper rack switches as well um, to embed network and security services marvell has a has a dp line i've i've written about that um, you know, over, you know, over the, you know, the last few years as well. So there's, there's a lot of innovation that's coming, you know, within the switching segment. Mark, any, any other perspective on, on the whole smart switch evolution? Yeah. And, and, um, and this really speaks to the topic for our discussion today, right? Customization is, is really everywhere. And I think we're going to continue to see, um, especially with, with innovative uh, NIC solutions, we're going to continue to see what was a very, um, let's say, uh, standard and well-known um, architecture for, for switching, uh, really evolving to to be extraordinarily unique um, and, and very specific to uh, to different customers and their their implementation. So, uh, we're I, th I think we're going to see exactly the the trends that you've alluded to. Uh, sure. In a continuing, you know, in more and more uh, than we have in the past. Yeah. Well, as we round out our conversation, that's a great segue to uh, the final question I have for both of you. And Rishi, I'll start with you. Um, what's next in the evolution of custom from your perspective? A good question. Actually, if you look from the whole phenomenon of custom, and I would start if you look at a data center rack, all the big iron components sitting inside the rack. We have already seen uh, customization happening on the CPU and the XPU side of the components sitting inside the rack. And now we are seeing, as I mentioned, the bifurcation of different classes of switch. There is mm -hmm. a traditional cloud switch, and then there is an AI switch. Within the AI switch, there's further bifurcation within the scale up and scale out switch. So it will be of no surprise that the next frontier of customization will be on the switching side where people would be doing custom switches and also this goes in hand to hand with the custom XPUs, DPUs, and the NICs, what we are seeing it. We are also seeing uh, a lot of push for the, of, for the photonic side in terms of the photonic engine or the optical engine being integrated inside the silicon, which is the CPU. And mm -hmm. of other frontier will be, there are different technologies and definitely customization would be playing a very crucial factor in CPUs because CPU engine by itself will be defined based on your usage, your scalability, what length you want to drive, what applications you want to drive. And also in, in order to get these things done, it goes a further level into platform where you need to look into the customization at the platform level, whether what reach are you using? Are you using copper or optics? What thermal solutions are you using on your design? Either it is liquid cool or it is just air cool. All of these will be factored into the custom silicon part of it. It will not be just a silicon engineering which has been customized for application usage, but it will be a platform and system which will influence the customization to happen. So as this rack goes through a transformation phase from CPUs to XPUs, and we have already seen the phase happening for the NIC. We have done a custom NIC for a lot of our hyperscalers, which is in the public mm -hmm. domain. And now it's basically the next evolution will be on the connectivity and on the switch side. Yeah, networking is sexy again, right? Mark, okay. what what do you see in your crystal ball with the evolution of custom? Yeah, absolutely. And, and uh, really building off of what Rishi shared with us, um, I think we're going to see um, more and more complexity integrated with these devices um, as, in, as we essentially define this platform that allows, that allows the data center to kind of uh, achieve their goals from a connectivity point of view. So we're going to see more and more integration, uh, things like co-package copper, co-package optics, uh, really mm -hmm. driving really complex package technology. Uh, mm -hmm. We just announced recently 
um, you know, a, a novel multi-interposer, two and a half D uh, package integration technology platform that allows our customers to really scale up the amount of content and also to uh, simplify two and a half D integration by removing silicon from the equation. Um, so these kind of innovations and in investments in the platform are really going to continue to grow this trend of system in a package, um, mm -hmm. which is really, really key for, for the data center to really achieve its performance goals. Yeah, and I'm, I'm glad you mentioned co-package optics. I mean, that's a pretty hot topic right now, right? I mean, the efficiencies there, the performance improvement, the, the power management that comes along with that. Uh, that's an area that I'm beginning to dig into and, and hope to publish some, um, you know, some insights on in the near future. So, but gentlemen, thank you for your time. It's been a very, very compelling conversation. I wanna thank all of our audience for joining us for this Cloud Infrastructure Spotlight at the 6.5 Summit. Stay connected with us on social media. You can find us at 65media.com backslash summit and there are more insights to come. So stay tuned.